were actually stole from a man by the name of Joseph O'Connor. You know, you've heard of Joseph O'Connor? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, this one, I only got it this evening, so you have to bear with me. This is the, the one he sent to Michael Noonan the week before the budget of Christmas. I thought it was excellent. So we'll have a go at it. I've taken, I've taken a great liberty just to write to you today because I know you've lots of things to do and don't hear what I say. But we're facing a great struggle just to reach the balanced book and short for mourning poets you just couldn't give a fiddlers. <laughs> but Michael, with the shining head and most melodious voice, I'm not asking to praise the reaper, but to give the man a voice. I know every dog and divil, every shiller has a view on what the finance minister on budget day should do. And those bleeding heartfelt wimples say don't flash, don't cut, don't burn. But Mickey with the axe of doom, please let me have my turn. Because the hardship's good for poetry and really good for prose. I'm the press of Joe O'Connor. I'm the one that really knows. Ah. Can you tell me one great novel, one great sonnet, one great poem, even one great bleeding sentence or a half-decent bleeding poem that was written in the good times when the tiger roamed our land, when we ruled by secret envelopes and the clever sweet backhand? We drove Porsches, we drove Beamers, we drove women bleeding wild. We were blinging, swinging, ding-a-linging and were your absorbing <laughs> child. <laughs> we went on exotic holidays and went back a second time because we always had a reason but we lost the bleeding rhyme. <laughs> we knew the price of everything, we valued sweet damn all and we marched the dance of destiny with a band of Fina Fall. And the land of saints and scholars was the land of on the lash. Then it all went humpty dumpty and we tumbled in the crash. <laughs> <sighs> And then the fat and sluggard poets lay wriggling in the mire and the writers lost their passion and the singers lost their fire and I lost all my money, some TDs lost the whip and Bursley lost his memory and Cowan lost the ship. <laughs> <laughs> and then we voted end to him and you and Michael N returned saying Fina fall and half the doll and bond holders would be burned. <laughs> but was that really true Mick? No it wasn't to be done. It's easier to burn pensioners and a lot more bleeding fun. <laughs> sure, tax the tits of workers, put VAT back on shoes. You've the right and shite to tax the rich, and direct tax let us choose. Choose between a steak or sausages, choose between a cake or bread, choose between a TV license or having their kids fed. Cut the payments on the social, sure they're only having crack. Keep it coming, keep it coming, <coughs> my rhyme is coming back. So put up the price of petrol, put a euro on the six, put a tax on entertainment, on plays and films and gigs. Put a tax on every book and store, every cinemix in every cineplex. Put a tax on heavy petting and a levy on full sex. <laughs> put a tax on wine and spirits, legalise the use of dope. Then put a tax on dope heads, is there only bleeding hope. Put a tax on gay and football, and on every rugby match, when all our trips there to Poland, should that could be a real good catch. Put a tax on using condoms. Oh, and pan on, I've just discovered that's a double dip taxation because we've already got that covered. Raise the tax on instant baby food, on every single nappy. Search out tax on anything you can. Think of just, just make us bleed and happy. Because when we descend to nothingness, our poetic sense will flow. Next Friday, tax us back to life. Yours sincerely, Moni Joe. <laughs>